If you got an Apple Studio display, you may wonder how the color reference mode work. Let's find out together. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Apple Studio Display marks a big shift in Apple Pro Display color management philosophy. For instance, let's start out with the system preferences and display. You will notice that there are a few changes in this dialog. One of them being the fact that you have this preset mode now for different colors and there is no place in there where you can choose the display ICC profile. There is still a way for you to do it if you want to calibrate the display. For instance, you would have to go into Color Sync Utility, click on the Devices tab, open up the arrow for the display, and then click on Studio Display, to which it will tell you what the factory profile is and what the current profile running on this display is. If you want to reset this at any given moment, click on the drop down arrow, set it to factory, or you can choose the other profiles that you may want to use. And this is going to default to the color sync profile folder on your system so that you can choose another ICC profile. But beyond this though, we're not going to talk fully about calibration. That is for another video. What we're going to do is quickly go over the display system setting preferences. All right. Starting out at the very top, you have the resolution, which is most of the time going to be default for display. This is the resolution Apple thinks is going to make the display look best. If you want to go and change this, you certainly can do that by clicking on scale. With scale, you have two options on the opposite end of the spectrum, larger text, which means things are easier to read, but less screen real estate, or you can go on to the opposite end, more screen real estate, but the text and everything will look much smaller. All of these are generally going to be scale resolution. If you hover over any one of them, it will tell you what the resolution would look like. Now, if you take a look at all these listing right now, none of them are really showing native 5K resolution because everything will look extremely tiny and your eyes would hurt really fast. If you want to see the advanced scaling option, you can hold down the option key and click on scale to which you now have the option to go in and run the display at native resolution. Although because of the size of the text and everything, I highly discourage you from doing that. If you want to go back, simply option click on scale and this will show you the simpler resolution selection or the equivalent for this. One more thing I want to mention is that macOS scales the entire operating system, which is why you're seeing all these equivalent. It doesn't just scale the interface in any single apps. So as you're doing the higher scaling option, be mindful that your computer is now pushing much more data than even if you're running the display at native resolution. On these new Mac Studios, it would be able to drive it just fine. If you're on an older Mac, well, you may run into some lag. So that is the side effect of this. The other thing that you have right now that you can do is change the brightness of the display. And at the peak brightness right now, this is close to around 600 nits. You can certainly dim this down and you can use a control on a keyboard to do the same thing. In fact, what you can do right now is also select the automatically adjust brightness so that it will constantly monitor the luminance in the room and adjust the display accordingly. You can also enable True Tone, which monitors the color temperature in the room and constantly adjusts and change the display white points so that it matches with what you're really seeing color temperature rise in the environment you're in. For color accuracy work in general, I recommend to disable these options. It may not be a bad option to use if you're using it for content consumption, web browsing, but when you're doing color critical work, definitely go in and disable those. The next thing that you will see instead of ICC profile are these presets. These are kind of like the pseudo hardware calibration mode that has been calibrated from the factory and stored in the display. It's broken down into a few different portions. For example, at the very top, similar to the Pro Display XDR and also the Liquid Retina XDR display, you will have the Apple display. This is P3 600 nits. This is the only option that you can choose on the display that will allow you to go in and free roam on the brightness. This is also the only option that you can do automatic adjust brightness and true tone because all of the other option will disable all these three functionalities. The other options that you see below, these are the recommended preset that Apple has given to you. These are the different reference mode. And yes, they correspond to different brightness on the display with different color space, although their description pretty much tells you what it's using. For example, photography is using P3 color space at a color temperature of D65. It doesn't tell you though the luminance. However, on this display, you can quickly and easily go in and set the luminance to the level that you want. 
To do that, what you simply have to do is go down to the very bottom here to customize preset. And the customized preset, for example, you see that I have three photography ones going right now. Let's just create another one. So I'll click on customize preset. And by the way, if you have a preset created, but you don't want that anymore, for example, let's say I don't want this one anymore. I can simply go in and click on the minus sign like that. And will ask me if I want to delete it. I can certainly do that. And it will remove that preset from the display. In fact, it is the preset that I'm using now, which is the reason why the display went blank for a little bit there. In addition to this, my pro tip has always been to choose the preset that you want to use as a starting point. So let's say I want to use photography as the starting point for the preset. I would simply go in, highlight photography, and then click on the plus sign. This will copy the setting that you have selected. For instance, let's say I want to do one for video. I'll do HD video, BT 709, and also BT 1886. You can see that it's copying those settings over right away. But let's create a custom preset that we want to use for photography first. So I'll highlight photography, click on the plus sign, and this is where you would go in and create a custom name. I recommend changing name instead of doing copy. Type down exactly the setting that you have dialed in. This way you know when you go and select the next time, what are the settings for this specific preset. For instance, I'm going to do luminance at 100 and I want to do the color space to be sRGB. We'll do that. The color gamut, this is where you would choose. And because I want to use sRGB, I would choose Rex 9 sRGB. White point, because I'm doing this for display viewing, I'm going to choose D65. If you want to do this for print, you can choose D50. And SDR transfer function, which in layman terms, what that really translates to is gamma. You can choose to use pure power, which is a direct linear line. So I'm using 2.2 right now. But the other option that you can choose, especially if you do video, is, for instance, BT1886. So if you're creating this preset for video with Rec. 709, I highly recommend choosing that instead of pure power. And the last option you have is the maximum luminance in SDR or standard dynamic range. What do you want? So I'm going to limit this to actually 100 because I have this set as L100. And the option for limit luminance to full screen capability, this has to be checked for any displays other than the Pro Display XDR. So from there, I'm going to click on Save Preset. It's going to jump me into that preset right away, which is the reason why the display went dark again to set those settings properly. You will notice as I jump between different preset mode, the display pretty much went darker because this is now the equivalent luminance of 100 nits or 100 candela. Once I have this set, if I want to come in and change this to content consumption mode, I can simply come into system preferences display and change to all these other modes down the road. Now, the other thing that I can do with this is rather than going into display inside system preferences all the time, because that can take some time to navigate to, you can simply go to control center and on display, there's that little arrow, click on that, click on the arrow one more time, and you will have all these different preset modes that you have created that you can choose from. You can certainly narrow down the scope of this list as well. For instance, if you go into customize preset, you can say show a menu, I'll say Apple display, and also the three photography modes that I have created. I'll press done. And if I go back into the control center again, I'll go into there and you will see that it's now showing me a simplify list for all the color modes that I can choose, eliminating all the other ones so I don't see them. However, if you still want to get access to those, you can still come into system preferences display and access all these color modes there. They are not removed from the system. One last thing that you can do to color fine tune this display is to do a fine tune calibration to which this is where I'm going to stop because that gets into calibrating the Apple Studio display and that is for another video. Anyway, I hope that you find this guide on Apple Studio display reference mode helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.